Hello, and welcome to the Pricing for the Planet podcast, the podcast that explores the intersection between business and sustainability. Today, it's a special episode because we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. So, Tiki, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. Thank you, Fabian, for the invite. Of course. And, you know, we have a tradition in this podcast. We start kind of, kind of from the end. So, Tiki, what would be the one key message you would like the audience to take away from this episode? I think my what I would like, the key takeaway, is to create a better understanding with your, with your listeners and your audience of the shared value business management concept. And that as private sector, you need to create value for all stakeholders and not only for your shareholders. Perfect, because I think we will deep dive into this concept. So maybe Tiki first, can you introduce yourself and maybe explain what you mean by shared value and what is behind this concept of shared value? Thank you, Fabian. So I am an African. I live on the Africa continent. My name is Tiki Barnard, and I am the CEO and founder of the Shared Value Africa Initiative. Now, the concept of creating shared value was developed by Professor Michael Porter and Mark Kramer at Harvard University. Uh, well, Harvard Business School, because they're both sort of world-renowned economists as well. And, and you know, when you look at the, the concept of creating shared value, you know, it is about profitably addressing social and environmental challenges through the core business operations. And, and I think if we look, Fabian, at the, at the, the puristic definition of shared value, it is about policies and practices. So those policies and practices that we developed as organizations to enhance our competitiveness. However, when we develop those policies and practices, we need to simultaneously not only advance the company, but also advance the economic and social conditions within the communities in which we operate. So it's really how every company should be working. You need to, yes, you need to make your money in order to be sustainable. We all understand that. But you also have to look at how you affect the society and the environment while you're busy operating as an organization. Super interesting. So, so it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's moving from a more like complex world where before it was very easy, it was one single KPI, it was like profits. And yeah. we are moving from a more complex world where we don't just look at profit, but at, we also look at the impact of the company on the society. Absolutely. I want to add to, to what you were saying. I think the days of organizations focusing on profit only is over. Because you have to, as an organization, you have to have a purpose. So we call it in our world, profit with purpose. We're saying you can still make a profit. You know, there's nothing wrong with organizations making a profit. But you need to look while you're making your profits. How did you affect the communities in which you operate? How did you affect your, all your stakeholders? You know, if you look, uh, Fabian, if I can just cite a quick example, if you're looking at the mining industry, you know, and, and, uh, and the extractive industry is, is notoriously bad for this, how do they affect the communities in which they operate? I don't, I don't think I've, I've had, I have too many positive examples of, of, of ex, uh, you know, about the extractive industry where, where the communities were, you know what I mean, very positively, you know, treated from that perspective. Because normally in a mining industry environment, is sometimes they even move people, you know, away from where they used to live because of where they're going to do, uh, you know, where they're going to start mining. So, yeah, it is about positively, you know, affecting the society and the communities in which you operate. 
super clear. And, and, and that's one thing we like to do in this podcast. It explores this intersection between business and sustainability. Do you have examples of companies which successfully implemented value shared or shared value? Absolutely. I think for us on the Africa continent, uh, we've got in Kenya um, an organization called Safaricom. So they are a telco company and, and um, they, um, their purpose as an organization is to transform lives. So when they look at product development, you know, the first and, and, and their previous CEO who sadly passed away in 2019 always used to tell me, Tiki, when, they, when the innovation team comes into the boardroom with a new product, the first question that is, is posed to the innovation team is, is this product going to transform lives? Now, Safaricom at this stage is contributing 5% to the Kenya GDP. They also are the organization, and I, I don't know if you've heard about it, Fabian, but from a, from a mobile money perspective, they launched the, the Mpesa product on the Africa continent. And I think that's the most, the biggest and the best success story on, on mobile money that started in, on the Africa continent. So what they've done is, and just to give your, your listeners a little bit of an insight into why we say it is about profitably addressing societal issues. Now, Kenya had a, a very big problem because there were millions of people that had no access to a financial services system. So what Safaricom did through Mpesa, they gave people access through their mobile phones to a financial services product. So people could, could send money to each other. That was the first step that they took. So if I live in a, in, a, in a rural area where there was a small little shop, my daughter could send me money from, you know, from Nairobi in Kenya via the cell phone. All I had to do was go into the shop, give them the, the, the PIN number, and they would give me the money that my daughter sent. So what they did in that process they gave, I think at this stage today, they, I think there are probably 45 million Kenyans that use Mpesa. So did Safaricom make money? Damn sure they did, because they now have 45 million Kenyans using the Safaricom you know, services to actually use Mpesa. And as Mpesa has grown, people started putting their salaries on there. They started being able to, to, you know, to apply for loans. They now had a credit record. So it really, really addressed a societal issue of not people not having access to f financial services. And it also made Safaricom a lot of money. So that's our Africa example. There are obviously other ones. You know, there's, there's, if you look at, um, I think Nestle, Nestle was one of the, of the, of the first shared value adopters. And I'm talking about a long time ago, Fabian, um, 10 years ago, I think it was. And they focus on areas like nutrition, water and rural develop development, you know, and, and, and what they did is they work with farmers to improve their agricultural practices. To, to enhance the quality of their raw materials while improving the livelihoods of the farmers. So that example is about coffee. So I think it was quite a couple of years ago, Nestle used to be the number one supplier of coffee in the world. And then they hit a, a snag in Africa, actually. I think it was in Cote d'Ivoire, where the coffee beans were really not of a good quality. So therefore, the standard of their products dropped. So what they had to do is go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what is the problem here? We need to look at our farmers. We need to look at their soil, help them to look at their soil. We need to look at the quality of their seeds. And what we have to do is we've got to help them and train them so that they can deliver a superior product so we can up the quality of our product in order to become number one again. So it's a value creation for all. For all, yeah, I love that. And you know, funny enough, I mean, if we look at the traditional companies like a long time ago, they all like, I'm thinking about Ford, I'm thinking about, you know, those kind of 
big companies now, they started those companies with one purpose. And I think a lot of those companies lost this purpose. Like, I mean, I, I'm a big car person, but if, I mean, Ford for me, it's still like, it was a car for everybody, but now what's the purpose? Everybody has a car. What is a new purpose? Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. And, and companies have to look at that. Are you with me? Because I think that also, um, you know, my generation and I'm, I'm, I'm a baby boomer. So for us, it was only about profit, profit, profit and money, money, money. But your younger generation are now looking for organizations that are consciously, you know, addressing societal and environmental issues. And they can, they can, you know, if you, if you vote with your purse, you purchase from those organizations that truly show that they they are concerned about what's happening from an environmental perspective. An example for me also is IKEA. IKEA is a prime example of creating shared value. A couple of years ago, they looked at, you know, people with disability. You know, how do you, if you have a disability uh, and you your hands are deformed, how do you switch a light on? How do you open a door? You know, if you have certain disabilities, how do you sit down properly? They created a complete product range through, through you know, obviously research and development. They created an, a, a complete new product range for people with disability and therefore created a brand new market for themselves. You know, so, so it is really about how organizations consciously look at addressing societal and environmental issues through the core operations of the business. Super interesting. And I think it's a good transition because I would love for you to explain a little bit more what is the Shared Value Africa Initiative. Well, the Shared Value Africa Initiative was born on Africa Day in 20, what are we now, six years ago this May. I can't remember, 2017, 2018, we were born. So the Shared Value Africa Initiative is a pan-Africa organization. So we're part of the Shared Value Global Network. So we've got sister organizations in Australia, in Hong Kong, in India, in North and South America, and then we're responsible for, for the Africa continent. And our mandate as the Shared Value Africa Initiative and, and I guess it's my dream as well, Fabian, is that one day all companies across the entire Africa continent will practice the business management concept of shared value, where you profitably address societal and environmental issues and through that create value for all. So that's the dream. Uh, we operate at the moment after uh, almost six years old. We will be this year in uh, 13 countries across the Africa continent. It's quite a it's quite a hard task, you know, to enter a new um, company. I mean, not company country because you have to build up your 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 contacts and your relationships within those those countries. And um, but it's been a really really. Uh, inspiring and, and a really a, a great journey the last six years building the Shared Value Africa initiative. Yeah, congratulations. I think it's it's what you've done so far. It's, it's quite impressive. So I was I was very excited actually to do this podcast because I was very impressed by what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so, you know, in, in this podcast, we like to explore like kind of new and innovative business models. I was wondering if during your, your career and through your initiative, you've met or, or you encountered some interesting business models or, or business approaches related to shared value or related to sustainability. I think when you, you know, Fabian, when we look at shared value and we look at sustainability, I think that that there, there, there's so many, I almost want to say interesting concepts. I don't know if you know about um, discovery. So discovery is uh, uh, was started here in South Africa, but at the moment they actually working across 23 countries. So they have the most amazing business model from a from a life insurance perspective. Okay, so they have a loyalty program where they 
you know, they, through their customer base, what they try and do is they motivate you to go to gym, to exercise, to walk, to run. And what happens is the loyalty programs is that you then accumulate points for on this particular loyalty program based on the amount of exercise that you do. So then that amount of exercise that you do and the loyalty points that you that you um, build up gives you a discount. Maybe if you go and buy your groceries and your card, you know, you, you link your, your discovery insurance to your to your credit card you go into the store you buy your your produce and if you buy fresh produce you automatically as you leave the store they credit you a certain percentage of the cost of that um, you know of the food that you bought back into your into your bank account also through their incentives what they do is if they if you think about it if they keep you healthy, you know what I mean? They save money that way, you know, because people don't go to hospital. It's actually, a, it's a life and a medical aid. It's a life insurance and a medical aid. So let me just correct that. So if they keep you healthy, then they don't pay that much out to the hospitals and to the doctors through the medical insurance. So that's why they incentivize you to stay healthy, you know, as as. Um, discovery, but they they have expanded. I mean, their business model is quite interesting as well because they don't go into a country as discovery. They find the biggest medical aid, you know, a company in a country, and then they create a business model with that company to to incentivize you know their customers to stay healthy, to exercise, to go to gym, to eat healthy. So for everything you get, an in, you incentivize. And then they also started to create new products and markets. What they did is they started um, a, a safe driving product as well. So they went into, into short-term insurance. And what they did is that you get points. They put a little sensor in your car. If you travel at the speed rate, you know, at the normal speed rate, if you don't break, you know, at a jarring, you know, effect, you get, you, you, they read your driving, you know, within your car. And then you get points for that as well, which again, at the end of the day, gets um, get, gives you credit on your insurance. So there's some really great you know, innovative ideas out there. I love that. And it's, it's yeah, I, I think it's so interesting. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's as a good transition, I've, uh, there is one thing we are convinced at Pricing for the Planet, it's about education. And I think, you know, being inspired by those kind of companies, it's really valuable. Yeah. Do you have any resources or any good places where the audiences could get education about sustainability? You know, you can go, I think what everybody nowadays, you know, Fabian, when you talk about it, it's all about sustainability. I think one of our things that we say is that value creation is about sustainability, you know, and, and how, and, and I think, you know, it's about all of those things about identifying social issues where you can align your business strategy with social issues that intersect with the core business. You there's a, It's about innovation. It is about improving operational efficiencies. Where can you go to go and learn about sustainability? Because I think there's a there's a big shift, as you rightfully said now as well, you know, with 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 specifically with the younger generation that wants to move into that sustainability and ESG world, you know, because there uh, is a lot of talk about ESG, you know, in environmental, social and governance. I think your best bet is that you need to identify, you know, within your community, is there a university that have a, you know, that, that um, has a course? But the thing is, there is so much information available on the internet on sustainability. I mean, you can visit our website, you know, www.svai.africa as well. But the, the, the one thing that I want to say to anybody that wants to move into, into the sustainability world is that do your research, you know, and, and really, really look for the right organization that has got the same value system 
um, as you. Perfect. And we, we've got this question a lot, but do you have any advice on anyone who would be interested to move toward a more sustainable career? I think that there are lots of opportunities, I have to say, you know, out there for sustainability experts, you know, or sustainability executives. And, and we see them all at, all the time, you know, from that perspective. But I think what you need to do is you need to equip yourself. I don't, you know, from a, there's a global reporting initiative, the GRI. You can go and have a look at what the GRI standards are. How do they do their reporting? Because I think if you do want to become a, a renowned sustainability expert, you need to know about the different reporting requirements within an organization as well so there's the you know there's the, the the gri is quite a good base because the global reporting initiative i mean they they've created those standards you know and a lot of companies use the gri but the other thing that you need to look at is to look at the sdg the un sustainable development goals because if you look at the un sustainable development goals is that all companies is responsible for, for specifically if you're listed, if you're a listed entity, you have to report on how you are addressing the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Because in the old days, you know, it was the government's responsibility to address the UN Millennium Millennial Goals, it was called then. But the UN Sustainable Development Goals now is the responsibility of the private sector organization. And in there are indicators you know, that you can learn about from a, from a sustainability perspective as well. Yeah, I like that. And, and I agree with uh, SDG. I think that this is very valuable uh, yeah. inf information. And one question, this one is, is my favorite because it's almost like a philosophical question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Tiki, what is something that many people believe to be true? but your experience suggests otherwise i think okay i think a common belief in business fabian is that one needs to choose between profit and social responsibility and however in my experience with the shared value africa initiative you know my experience suggests completely otherwise We've seen that companies can integrate social and environmental considerations into their core strategies and creating sustainable business models that can drive both financial success and positive social impact. And I guess I'm coming back to, to what is that one thing that um, people believe it's true, but in my experience, it's otherwise. I believe that it's not about profit only anymore it's about profit with purpose i love that very good answer <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> tiki thank you so much for for your very valuable insights and information maybe where can the audience find you where should they go to get more information should they follow you on linkedin should they go on your website what and how can they help you know your initiative as well Thank you for that, for that, Fabian. Um, yes, you can follow me on LinkedIn. We'd love for you because I, I post, you know, I try and share quite a lot what we're doing from a Sheet Value perspective. You can also follow the Sheet Value Africa initiative on LinkedIn, LinkedIn as well. You can visit our website, www.svai.africa. You can sign up for our newsletter because then you get to know about all of the things we do in Africa. We've, we, one of our focus areas, just to quickly tell you, Fabian, is gender equality. So, so um, we have the African University's Gender Equality Forum that's now on the 27th of March, where we try and get African universities together to talk about gender equality, you know, and gender inequality as, as well. So, so how can you support us? Follow us. 
you know, and, and look at what we're doing. Tell people about the concept of shared value because that's the way we have to do business globally. So, um, yeah, and just join our community. It would be really nice if you come to all of our, we've got a lot of online events. We've got an African uh, Entrepreneurship Forum now on the 15th of, of March as well. So there are lots of things happening in our world that your audience can link in, you know, from a webinar perspective. Or they can come to the summit in Kenya in October on the 24th and the 25th. We've got the Africa Shared Value and ESG Summit in Nairobi in Kenya. Perfect. Super. Thank you again, Tiki, for the audience. Thank you so much for your time. If you want to continue the learning journey with us, you can follow us as well on www.pricingfortheplanet.com. We also have a newsletter called the Bi-Weekly Digest. We, do, we don't talk much about shared value. I think Siki is doing that much better than us, but we talk more about sustainability, how we monetize sustainability and you know how you price and uh, monetize this, this concept of, yeah. of sustainability. So again, to end this, this podcast, a huge thank you for your time, your interest, and be well. Thank you.